that statement from the German government, plus we had Man Emmanuel Macron casting doubts of the efficacy of the vaccine on the over 65s. You've actually looked at the trials. What have you found? Yeah, so this was reported by a German newspaper called Handelsblatt uh, earlier in the week. And they said that sources inside the German government had said that the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine was only, as you said, 8% effective among over 65s. Um, the German government, the German health ministry then uh, issued a statement saying this isn't what we think. We think they may have um, confused the proportion of the total trialists um, who were between 56 and 69. Um, with the efficacy rate. Um, that doesn't actually seem to be the case anymore because data was published which shows um, what at first glance looks like an efficacy rate of just 6% uh, among over 65s. This isn't uh, really an efficacy rate of just 6%. This is due to the fact that there were so few over 65s in the trial um, that it's really hard for them to have you know, observed any sort of efficacy. So just to give you the numbers, under 65s, there were about five and a half thousand people in each half of the trial. So five and a half thousand people received um, under 65 received the vaccine and five and a half thousand didn't. Among the uh, people who did receive the vaccine, there were about 30 infections. And amongst those who didn't, there were about 100 infections. So that's the sort of 70 percent average efficacy rate that we've heard before. Among uh, over 65s, there's only about 300, 350 in each trial arm. And among the control group, there was one infection. And among the vaccine group, there was also one infection. So there appears to be no difference here. But really, it's just because there were so few trialists um, over 65 that we can't really know what the efficacy rate is. Now, AstraZeneca said, uh, when we look at just the immune response of over 65s, it appears to be similar. There's no reason to think that it would be less effective among over 65s. And the German government has you know, said that it's not going to be uh, rolling out this vaccine to over 65s without more data. But that's not the same as saying that it thinks that it's only eight or six percent effective. It's just to show that really there's not enough data on this uh, to know for sure, at least as far as the German government's concerned. OK, uh, let's move on to your next fact check that you've done. And in fact, they're, they're all bunched into one because um, and we've talked about this on the show before. As full fact, you have um, launched this uh, scheme where people can use WhatsApp to send you things that they've seen on WhatsApp and on social media, but they can WhatsApp it to you and then you go off and fact check it. So these are um, a few claims that you've received through your WhatsApp service. Um, let's kick off with the top one here, which is there is pork in the COVID-19 vaccines. Is there? There isn't pork in the in the COVID nineteen vaccines. So yeah, as as you said, we we have a, a WhatsApp um, number because we we're aware that you know certain especially certain uh, ethnic minority groups may be more active on WhatsApp than other social media channels. So we were trying to capture that, and this definitely is something that seems to be circulating among Muslim communities, um, and maybe an issue for for other sort of uh, religious groups. There is pork in some vaccines, but not the. Uh, not any of the COVID-19 vaccines. So specifically, for example, the shingles vaccine uses pork gelatin. Um, but the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, um, the Pfizer vaccine, none of them contain any animal products whatsoever and have all been sort of recommended and endorsed uh, by religious groups in the UK from the yeah, Hindu, uh, Jewish and Muslim uh, religious communities. OK, um, next one that uh, was making the rounds on WhatsApp groups and social media was that the COVID-19 vaccine will cause infertility in younger men. Yeah, so again, there's not any evidence to say this. There is a study looking at whether this may be the case, although the lead researchers said we don't think we'll find anything. We're just doing the research because it's of interest. If anything, the, the evidence sort of suggests that the COVID-19 vaccine might um, you know, protect fertility to some extent. Uh, there was a study that found that being infected with COVID-19 itself um, could harm the male reproductive system because the COVID-19 virus uh, could actually attack uh, cells in the male reproductive system. And so having the vaccine would would give some sort of protection against that. Um, we've obviously also seen sort of claims that uh, the vaccines could affect female fertility, women's fertility, for which there's no real evidence. Um, but this is, yeah, again, something that seems to be circulating among specific um, groups, but doesn't really kind of hold up, doesn't have any evidence or, or truth behind it. 
Okay, and the last one that's been making the rounds that you've had to deal with are, is the, the claim that vaccines pose a risk of death to the elderly. Yeah, so this is a more of a general concern, I guess. I mean, one thing that's to be noted is that the actual virus, COVID-19, is estimated to kill anywhere between 0.5 and 1% of the population in, in countries like the UK with a relatively old population. And obviously, the, the risk of death increases um, quite significantly significantly the older you are. Um, meanwhile, the trial data from uh, the vaccines that have been approved shows no deaths uh, associated with the vaccine. People do die during the trials, but that's a fact of life that pe if you have uh, a group of 11,000 people and you observe them for a number of months, you may see someone die. Um, it's not unheard of, but deaths actually linked to the vaccine. Uh, there haven't been any sort of reported um, at all. I want to skip to the other claim that uh, you've been looking into, which is that 53 people have died in Gibraltar in 10 days after vaccinations with the Pfizer COVID-19 uh, vaccinations have started. Um, this, again, is a claim that's gone viral on Facebook, of all places. Uh, you've looked into it. What have you found? Yeah, so um, there's not really any truth in the idea that any of these deaths are linked to vaccines. So what we found was that Gibraltar started vaccinating uh, people on the 10th of January. 10 days later, on the 20th, it had said that it had seen 53 deaths due to COVID-19, due to the infection overall, um, of which some happened before the 10th of January, so it couldn't have had anything to do with the vaccine anyway. Um, the Gibraltar government have said that six have died uh, for reasons unrelated to the vaccine. Obviously, the vaccine is being rolled out to the elderly population and the elderly population are more likely, as I said, to die anyway over a given period of time. So we're seeing stories of this many people have died after vaccines in different kind of countries, but not really taking into account the fact that you would see a death rate anyway um, um, amongst older people. So, yeah, there's no truth in this story and there's uh, nothing really in, in, in the idea that lots of old people are dying because of the vaccine. Um, elsewhere. Now, um, we've got a few minutes left. I've left this one till last because there's a lot packed in it. Uh, so I'm going to let you, Abbas, uh, pick out the bits that you think are, are important uh, to talk about. But this concerns um, several coronavirus claims made by an MP in his local newspaper. The MP concerned is the MP for Somerset and Frome, MP David Warburton. Um, and he was asked in the Somerset County Gazette uh, about his reasons for voting against the latest lockdown. And in that reasoning, I think it's fair to say you found quite a lot of inaccurate bases upon which he took that decision. Yeah, so I think it's worth saying that you know, there are reasons, legitimate reasons why people might think that lockdowns are not the way forward. Um, the effect on other people's health um, who don't have COVID, effect on the economy, etc. So I'm not saying that it's wrong to have a sort of anti-lockdown opinion, but some of these arguments yeah, made by the MP um, didn't really hold up. So, for example, one of the things that he claimed was that our mortality rate remains much the same as other countries. Now, in the week to the 11th of January, when he had written that article, um, the UK reported the fourth highest rate of COVID-19 deaths in the world. And overall, uh, to date, it's seen kind of the eighth highest rate. Um, so the idea that our mortality rate is much the same as other countries just doesn't really hold up. Um, it is particularly bad. The uh, one of the claims that was quite interesting um, was the idea that for under that he made was that for under 60s, there's a one in 300,000 chance of death. Um, now it's really hard to work out exactly how many people die um, after getting COVID-19 because, uh, as we've said in many of our articles, we don't know how many people have been infected. Um, however, this is quite obviously wrong. There's about 5,000 under 65 who have died of COVID-19. Uh, it's about 5,400 who have died with COVID-19 and roughly 90% of people who die with COVID-19 died of COVID-19 as the underlying cause. With that many deaths among that age group, for a one in 300,000 death rate, it would require there to be about one and a half billion under 65s living in the UK, which right. is obviously not the case. Um, so that's quite an elegant way to show that this death rate was 
uh, massively uh, sort of underplayed in the article. Uh, the MP, in fairness, uh, went on to note that the uh, death rate um, among sort of uh, over 80s was around 90, or the survival rate for over over 80s was around 90%, so 10% die, which is more in line with um, with what you would expect. Okay. It's worth noting that um, you know death is not the only outcome from this disease. It is shown to have long-term effects or medium long-term effects on people's quality of life. So, you know, the fixation on death is perhaps not, um, you know, one we should necessarily have. Okay. Uh, Abbas, as always, uh, thank you very much for giving us your time. Abbas Panjwani there, one of the fact-checkers at the fact-checking charity Full Fact.